The Knicks just finished making their trade deadline move, and Chris and I are here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Dario and Chris. And yesterday, Chris and I, we recorded a video talking about Alec Burks. But of course, the Knicks surprised us all by also being able to grab Bognam Bogdanovich from the Detroit Pistons. And just to get into the full details here, the Knicks get Bojan and Alec Burks, and they are sending Quentin Grimes, Malachi Flynn, Evan Fournier, unfortunately, Ryan Archidiakono, and two second round picks to the Detroit Pistons. Chris, give me your reaction to this trade as soon as you heard of it. I mean, I thought the Knicks won instantly. Yesterday, I said, or the day before, that the only way to acquire Boyan Bogdanovich was to trade a first-round pick, and that that was my one issue with it. Is essentially, I didn't want to give up a first-round pick and not know if Bogdanovich was going to play. Well, never mind that, because the Knicks did not have to give up a first-round pick to acquire Bogdanovich or Alec Burks. They get the two of them. In the process, they give Evan Fournier, who has played two games this season, Malachi Flynn, who's hardly played for the Knicks since they traded for him, Quentin Grimes, who wanted to get moved anyway, and Ryan Archdiakono, who I'm the most sad about. Facts. And Archdiakono doesn't play for the Knicks. He's just there for vibes, and he's the one who I'm most sad about losing. I knew Grimes was going. I knew Fournier was going. I didn't care about Malachi Flynn because he's never really played. And now they get Alec Burks, who was once with the Knicks before, can play the backup guard role well. This means Deuce McBride is going to stay the backup point guard. Burks is going to slide in to where Grimes was as the backup wing, averaging 12.5 points per game and shooting 40% from three. But the key here is Boyan Bogdanovich. The man is averaging 20 points per game this season on 47% shooting from the field and 41 and a half shooting from three-point range. This is a guy who, when the Knicks are healthy, when Julius Randle is back, is going to be a 20-point-per-game scorer off the Knicks bench on top of having Alec Burks, Deuce McBride, and Precious Achua or Jericho Sims, potentially at one point Mitchell Robinson or Isaiah Hartenstein, coming off the Knicks bench with an elite starting unit. Leon Rose just hit a grand slam and has just put the Knicks closer in to NBA Finals contention. I say they're probably now healthy, a top five team in the NBA. All right, so let's go. Let's go with everybody healthy. Everybody healthy. The starting five is going to be Jalen Brunson, Dante, OG, Julius, and um, Mitchell, right? Probably, yeah. Correct. Okay, so now coming off the bench, we got Deuce, we got Alec Burks, we got Bojan Bogdanovic. Hartenstein. Hartenstein. Those are going to be the key players coming off the bench now, right? Am I missing anybody? Yeah. Uh, no, you're not. And once playoffs begins, Deuce McBride's minutes are going to shrink a lot. So really off the bench for playoffs, say the Knicks are fully healthy. We're going to see Burks, Bogdanovich, Burks, yeah. and Hartenstein coming off the bench. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Going going back to Quentin Grimes real quick. Quentin Grimes, what happened? I just remember him. I just remember a report coming out out of nowhere kind of saying that he's, like, disgruntled, I guess, with his, his minutes. Is that basically how this trade just happened? Like, he just got upset with Coach Tibbs and rotation? Yeah, so Grimes has been upset for a little bit now. And essentially, he didn't full-blown request a trade, but it seemed as if he wanted to be traded because Tibbs wasn't giving him minutes. It wasn't working out for Grimes and the Knicks, even though last season things were going great for them. This season, not as much. Dante DiVincenzo has been a better player on top of that, and Grimes has lost a ton of minutes playing nearly 12 a night. And basically, the Knicks knew they had to move him. The Pistons... They get back a young shooter, and that's important for them because they just gave up the two best shooters on their team, but they get back a young 3 and D guy who could slide in pretty perfectly next to Cade Cunningham and Osor Thompson. So huge, huge thing for them to land him. But yeah, Grimes wasn't too thrilled with the Knicks, wanted to be moved. Now he gets moved. He gets to sort of build it up with the Detroit Pistons while having some playoff experience to give them. So, I mean... Good consolation for the Pistons for not getting a first-round pick for Bogdanovich or Burks, but wow, the fact that the Knicks got away with highway robbery is unbelievable. Leon Rose is cooking. Facts. No, uh, you said something earlier about uh, the most the player that you're most sad about leaving is Ryan Ryan Archidiakono. Um, yeah. 
I mean, no, I, I'm in agreement with you. Um, Quentin Grimes, uh, I am sad about because he has so much promise. He has so much potential. Super athletic, obviously known as a shooter. And we did those videos, you know, in the summer talking about him and JJ Redick and how much he's trying to, like, um, add to his game. Unfortunately, yeah. he wasn't really able to show that because Coach Tibbs, he pretty much yanked him out as soon as he made a mistake. So I feel like mm. that was kind of the beginning of Quentin Grimes being disgruntled with the Knicks and Coach Tibbs. But, yeah, I mean, Quentin Grimes, like, uh, hopefully he does well with the D Detroit Pistons. Hopefully his career blossoms, you know. Hopefully he's able to show a lot more than he did with the Knicks. Um, Ryan Archdiakono, man. Like, I just, like you said, the vibes were there. The Nova boys, the, the, the Ryan Archdiakono on the bench, you could just see him cheering the guys on. You could see him being engaged with, like, trying to get defensive three-second calls against the other team. So, like, as far as, like, just vibes and the energy and the camaraderie, um, it kind of sucks. But, you know, he didn't really play, so it's not really a big loss. Um, yeah, for sure. But um, yo, man, that 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 Bogdanovich pickup, that Bogdanovich pickup, like Alec Burks, we did a video on him just yesterday, so we did talk a lot about him. But mm -hmm. Bogdanovich, man, like you said, averaging twenty points, three and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, shooting forty six point eight from the field, converting forty one and a half percent from three point. If you're a forty percent uh, shooter from three point, you're you're classified as a really good three point shooter. And this guy is forty one and a half, converting seventy eight percent from the field from the free throw line. Um, yo, that's nice insurance, man. That's really nice insurance for uh, Julius Randle. I mean, yo, now it's all about just putting it together. We gotta wait for the pieces to for the players to get healthy. Mitchell, Julius Randle, and if we get everybody healthy, man, like Eastern Conference Finals, like Boston Celtics, they're the only team in, that I'm looking at right now. That's like they're the only certified team to me. But but they even have problems. The Bucks are yeah. the Bucks are still trying to get. Um, trying to get chemistry with Doc, and then Doc, in my opinion, isn't this great coach that everybody thinks about. So they're one and four with Doc. Exactly, one and four. Doc has the most game seven losses, the most three to one losses. Like, and he made top fifteen coaches of all time with one title. That's insane to me. Yeah. But Philly just Philly just had Joel Embiid missed because uh, of the surgery. They don't know if he's coming back towards the end of the season. There's a lot of question marks in the Eastern Conference, and like Jalen Brunson, me, me and you are a huge advocate of him being the best player on the Knicks. Best, best, possibly best point guard in the Eastern Conference. Like, crazier things have happened. Knicks going to the Eastern Conference Finals, I don't think it's a huge, huge, like, admiration for this season. What do you think? I think that it's not at all. And I think now that the Knicks have just made a statement that they can, in fact, make the NBA Finals this season and even win it. I fully believe this. If you look at the New York Knicks, they now have the best bench in the NBA once again. They traded quickly away, and that hurt the bench a lot because they obviously had to make adjustments. They now have a guy who's a career 40% shooter off their bench who averages 20 points per game this season. Look, he's going to start for now. Randall's out. Bogdanovich is going to start. Then he's going to come off the bench with a litany of playoff experience on multiple teams, on the Nets, on... I don't know if the Wizards made the playoffs the year that he was on them for, like, 26 games on the Pacers, on the Jazz, obviously not on the Pistons, but this is a guy who has been in the playoffs a bunch. You also get Alec Burks, who's been in the playoffs. And about Bogdanovich, the shooting goes nowhere come playoff time. He's shooting 38% for his career for the playoffs in the NBA. Look, the man is great. He is a starter on a championship team, and he is a bench player on the New York Knicks. The only team that really has an edge over the Knicks now is the Celtics, and they are an injury away, specifically a Jason Tatum or Porzingis injury away from the Knicks being able to run through them. You need Tatum and Porzingis because how thin that team is. I know they got Xavier Tillman. You know, I, I don't care. It's <laughs> Xavier Tillman, and he's a fine player. But you can't start him in the Eastern Conference Finals, especially if Mitchell Robinson's there, because Robinson would eat him alive. Yeah, like they need Porzingis. And now, when we're looking at this next team, they are deeper than anyone in the league. I mean, the eight-man rotation of let's say Mitch starts, because I have a feeling he would come back to the starting lineup. Though I could really see it going either way. I think Hardenstein would play more minutes, regardless. Though of Brunson, DiVincenzo. OG Ananobi, Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, with Hartenstein, who's the best backup center in the league when Mitch is here, Bogdanovich, who's arguably the best sixth man in the league, definitely the best backup forward in the league when Randle's back, and then Alec Burks, 
who's an elite shooter, a great player, a former Nick who knows how to get the job done in a Tibbs offense, who's clutch as all hell. That is an elite eight-man rotation that you could play all of them, depending on what happens, over 30 minutes a night in the playoffs for respectable reasons. So many guys in that lineup can go for 30 points on any night. So many guys in that lineup, when given the opportunity, a.k.a. Brunson, obviously, Julius Randle, obviously, DiVincenzo, we've now seen, Boyan Bogdanovich, and potentially even Alec Burks, in the right position, can average nearly 20 points or nearly 30 points, depending on who we're talking about, in a season or in a series. This is a perfect trade for the Knicks. The fact that they did it with zero first-round picks is incredible. And also, I just got to add in, if the Knicks are looking for a star, Boyan Bogdanovich makes $19.7 million next season, so they keep a tradable contract on top of all of it in Bogdanovich, who will be expiring once next season begins. So I kind of wanted to touch upon uh, something you said about, about the Boston Celtics. I went through Philly. I went through Milwaukee. We talked about the Boston Celtics, and I said that Philly and Milwaukee had question marks, but I totally forgot that Boston Celtics have a question mark right now, and you just explained it. You said Chris Tass Porzingis. Chris Tass Porzingis is injury prone. He already had a couple injuries with the Boston Celtics that made him miss a few games. I know he tweaked his ankle. Um, I think he had like a knee, a, a, a minor little knee issue towards the beginning of the season. But he's injury prone. And if you watch the Boston Celtics, like you can tell that a lot of what they do offensively depends on Chris Tass Porzingis. Chris Tass Porzingis, obviously with the Knicks, he had a lot of promise, a lot of potential, but then we dealt him to the Dallas Mavericks. When he was with Dallas, it didn't work out because the chemistry between him and Luka didn't work out. Chris Tapps still believed that he was the best player, when obviously it wasn't. But then when he went to the Wizards, he started. He had a really good season, but to me, those were empty stats. He wasn't really playing for anything. And I feel like this is the first time in a really long time that we've seen Chris Tapps with a team that's playing for something. Boston Celtics is championship or bust, straight up. Jason Brown, yeah. uh, J Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown, they've been going to the finals. I mean, they went to the finals two seasons ago, and they've been going to Eastern Conference finals for the last, I don't know, since they were born. They've been making deep, deep playoff <laughs> runs forever, and they haven't been coming up. They've been, they've been coming up short. So it's championship or bust. It's championship, bust, championship or bust for the Boston Celtics. And if you're depending on Chris Das Porzingis, like, I don't know how confident I am. But I also want to bring up another team that we both have completely forgotten about until this minute. We always have to be aware of the Miami Heat. I don't care what their record is in the regular season. Jimmy Butler, when the when April comes around, I think April 26th is always when the playoffs start. Jimmy Butler becomes Jimmy Jordan. This guy turns into a whole other player, and he completely sits out the, re the regular season, which I understand why, to save his energy, to save all his health for the playoffs. But yeah, man, Miami, I'm also, so right now to me, it's Boston and it's Miami. Milwaukee and Philly, I'm, those are actually like on a back burner for me. Um, depending on, on, what, on what Miami does uh, today, the last day of the trade deadline, we'll see what happens. But you always got to be aware of Miami. Um, Boston with the Chris Stapps thing, like, yeah, again, man, anything can happen. Weirder, thing, weirder things have happened in the league, and we'll see how this season ends up. But like you said, Leon Rose has been cooking. This uh, Bogdanovich pickup has been... It's really good. When everybody's healthy, man, this, wow, I'm actually, like, I'm kind of astonished right now. And I got a text from my buddy, and he texted me and said, the New York Knicks are 16-1 to to win the finals, sixth overall in odds, and then wow. just <laughs> adds to it, what a time to be alive. Because, for real, like, really, the Knicks have the sixth best odds to win the NBA finals. I don't know the teams above them. I don't know it off the top of my head. Here's who we know is the Celtics, the Nuggets, probably the Bucks, the Clippers, the Clippers. Yeah, 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 for sure. I don't know who those other who the other team would be. Look, the Knicks are in elite position right now. They're not that old. Look, Bogdanovich, thirty four years old. I get it. He's not the youngest. Yeah, but we're not Alex depending Bruce. on him. So that, that's... we're not dependent. Nobody's on our bench. Exactly. So it's like it's 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 awesome. He's thirty four, but like, yeah, we're not depending on him when uh, Julius Randle comes back. He's gonna be, he's gonna be such a good uh, a weapon coming off the bench. That's sick, yo. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm astonished by this, as you said. Like, but I genuinely <laughs> think this was the perfect trade for the Knicks. Great job done by Leon Rose. He's been doing this for a while. This is not the first time we've finessed the Detroit Pistons. As we did trade Dennis Smith Jr. and a second round pick for Derrick Rose once before. So, Leon just once in a while goes up to the Pistons, robs them, and then walks away. 
The Knicks <laughs> just did exactly that today. Happy trade deadline, everybody. You think uh, you think we're done? I think we're done, right? We don't really we're have... Done. We're done. That's yeah. the only one. That was a massive one. Yeah, because uh, Evan Fournier was in the trade, and that was the biggest trading uh, asset besides the draft picks. So, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think we're doing anything else, but... All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for checking it out. Leave it in the comments. Let us know what you guys think about the Alec Burks and Bogdanovich pickup. If you guys are as excited as Chris and I. But until next time, guys, we'll check you out on the next video. Remember, Taj Gibson for president. Jalen Brunson for MVP. And we out. Peace.